So when people have back pain, understandably, one of the first things they will say is, I think I need an MRI scan to find out exactly what the problem is. Well, unfortunately, the problem is, MRI scans aren't always that helpful. Stick around to find out more. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. Now, would you like to hear an unbelievable story? There was this amazing study done by Herzog et al. in 2017. They took a 63-year-old lady who had low back pain and they asked her to visit 10 different centres to have 10 different MRI scans over a three-week period. Now, it's only three weeks, so you wouldn't expect that much to have changed in her low back, and therefore, we would assume that all the MRI scan results would be the same, right? Well, the results were absolutely incredible. When they analysed all 10 scans, they found 49 different findings, 49 different things said across those 10 reports. More so, there was not one single common finding, not one single common phrase across all 10 reports. They all said different things. So depending on who reads your MRI scan and who creates the report, it could say something different. Now, that's just one reason why MRI scans are sometimes less helpful rather than more helpful when it comes to low back pain. And in this video, I'm going to try and take you through some of those other key reasons. Links to all of the research I use is in the description below. So first of all, there are plenty of people all over the world who have positive MRI findings show up on their scan even though they have no pain at all. So this comes from the work of Brinjit Giatal from 2015. They completed MRI scans on people who had no pain in their back at all. Despite this, they found that 52% of people aged 30 and 68% of people aged 40 had signs of disc degeneration on their MRI scan even though they had no pain at all. They also highlighted that 33% of 40-year-olds and 36% of 50-year-olds had signs of disc protrusion on their MRI scan, once again, even though they had no pain at all. It just shows that some of these signs are just normal parts of the aging process. Just like grey hairs. Okay, why does that actually matter to patients? Well, ultimately, we know that when patients see scary things on their MRI scan, like disc herniation, disc protrusion, or disc degeneration, they immediately and understandably start to panic. They say a picture paints a thousand words. Well, in this context, it paints 1,000 very scary words in our patient's head. And we know this from studies like that of Webster et al. 2013, who found that patients have worse outcomes when they have an MRI scan compared to when they don't. Hang on, say that again? That's right. Patients can have worse outcomes when they have an MRI scan compared to when they don't. Why is this? Well, it all relates back to what we said about scary words. If you had these signs come up on your scan, it might make you do things differently. You might exercise less. You might stay in bed more. You might think that you need to sit down more instead of standing up. All of these things have major knock-on effects, and that is why it matters. Now, back to that story of Our Lady who's had 10 different MRI scans. Can you imagine how challenging and how worrying it must be for her reading all those different scan reports? So, this one says I've got disc degeneration at L3. This one says I've got a disc prolapse at L4. And this one says that my joints are wearing out at L5. Can you see how challenging this is? We start off trying to have an MRI scan to find out what the problem is, and instead, we just get worried and confused. So one way that it was described to me really well was that an MRI scan isn't the same as a pain scan. It doesn't necessarily tell us the cause of our pain. It gives us a picture and then it's up to someone to interpret that picture and then make guesses or assumptions as to whether or not that might be the cause of the pain. Now imagine I gave you a picture of a chair and I said to you, could you tell me exactly what's wrong with this chair just by looking at the photograph? Now, sure, if there was something clear and obvious, like one of the legs was missing, that would be helpful. But the answer could also be a maybe answer. 
Maybe it's because of that rust that I see on that side. Maybe it's because the cushion is a little bit uncomfortable. Do you think the cushion's uncomfortable? You can see that this is exactly the same with the MRI of the back. There are reasons or signs that could be a problem, but also lots of signs that aren't necessarily the problem. OK, so let's answer a really important question. When is an MRI scan useful for low back pain? Well, it can be a really good option when we're worried about something serious or sinister going on in the back and we want to rule it out. Or when we have a very specific pathology in mind. So, for example, a patient who there is concerns over whether they have a tumour or a cancer in their back, we can scan them to see is that tumour actually there. Or it could be for something like quarter equina syndrome. This is where the bundle of nerves at the very lower part of the back get compressed and therefore we do an MRI scan to confirm or rule out that specific pathology. But the key thing with those situations is that there's been a doctor or a different clinician who has listened to that patient's story, tested their physical examination and has thought to themselves, I wonder if there's something serious going on there like this i better check that out. This means that they will ultimately only order scans for about 5% of the population to check out a handful of different pathologies. That's very different to ordering a scan for every patient with low back pain to find out what could be causing their pain. And if you want more information on that kind of clinical reasoning, check out this fantastic article from Hall et al. 2021, link in the description below. I'll read you the title. Do not routinely offer imaging for uncomplicated low back pain. That title tells you everything you need to know. So everyone, I must stress that this video is designed for educational purposes only. If you are watching this and you have low back pain, please consult a doctor or relevant clinician to get a more accurate diagnosis and plan. But otherwise, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Also check out our Instagram at Clinical Physio and our website clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.